Can we go a little bit into the ideas of Web3? Absolutely. So I'm going to I'm gonna just kind of start from scratch. Um, who here has heard of Web3? OK, that's great. This is beautiful. So a lot of people, you know, kind of are stuck within this dilemma when they hear, you know, Web1, Web2, Web3. Is it a, is it a continuous operation? Are we going right. to keep having more iterations of the Internet? And I think Web3 is not just simply the next stage of the internet just because, just because, you know, we have the iPhone 5, so of course the iPhone 6 comes right. next. Web 3 changes the core infrastructure of how the internet will operate, right? With Web 2, we emphasize on something known as user-generated content. So who's on Instagram? Who's on TikTok? Who's on all these platforms? We are creating data that is documented, the history we were talking about, documented and recorded on centralized servers all around the world. And we have a lot of analytics platforms on these platforms, but you don't get access to all the tools. You get access to what the server owner Facts. gives you, right? So you might not have the metrics that might assist you in propelling your brand the way that you need, you need it to be done. Web3 fundamentally changes how the internet works because think of it as a server base that all brands and all apps and services will use. It's one database. So I can cross-reference, I can write, I can read from this digital ledger system that everyone has access to. It's transparency in ways that we've never seen it. Now, why is this important? With Web2, there's only pretty much one thing that you can own on the internet, that you can physically own on the internet. Who wants to take a guess at what that is? That's, boom, I just heard it. Somebody got it. Say it again. Not email, there was another one. Boom, it starts with a D, domain. Right? So when people say, I have a brick and mortar retail store. I want to get into e-commerce. What's the first thing that they do? They go buy a domain. And where do you buy this domain? On GoDaddy, on Squarespace, on Wix. But these domains are held by gatekeepers. Your domain cannot exist on its own. It needs to be deployed onto a server. Again, you can go start your own server, but they're really expensive and so on and so forth. So what a lot of these platforms allow you to do the Amazon, EC2s, you know, um, uh, AWS, Firebase, they allow you to deploy your domain on their server. So usually, when apps go down, we say the server is down. With Web3, this fundamental infrastructure shifts again. We go away from you not only just being able to own your domain, but you can also own tokenized assets that can be grounded to either physical or digital experiences. And that is a fundamental change, right? Because you go from just owning one thing to being able to own any part of the internet. You are a owner in a part of the internet, as well as you know, what, what um, appertains to what you own, right? And there's different ways for us to connect reality and the digital world in unique ways. Today, if I could just kind of elaborate into this, I'm not really you know, here to talk about sort of the digital aspects. I'm here to kind of answer a question that I feel like majority of people are asking here, which is, we've seen the dot-com boom, and I feel like I missed that. We saw the AI boom, and I feel like I missed that. We saw the social media boom. I feel like I missed that too. I don't want to miss this boom. Not at all. And the issue is in how the information is communicated to people. Majority of us here are accustomed and we, not even conditioned, where our traditional shopping experience is being able to either go to a store, use money to buy something, and get a physical thing in return. A lot of Web3 concepts are encouraging us to commit forms of tokens, right, to buying digital products with no physical utility. 
So a lot of people say, well, I own this piece of art, but I don't have the physical one. What makes this better than a Mona Lisa or whatever it might be? And the solution to that is really thinking about NFTs, which I'm sure most, how many people have uh, heard of NFTs? I, everybody has to be up. In the last two years, we all heard about NFTs, non-fungible tokens. The missing play here is being able to connect the physical products that you own today and putting them on chain. Majority of us here sitting down, every single person, I kid you not, every single person here has wealth. The issue is there's not universal metrics for documenting your wealth. So they tell you a sign of wealth is, you know, uh, local and foreign assets, land. They tell you assets are what you have in your bank account. But what about all the furniture in your home? What about all the clothes you own? What about any of these things that once they are tokenized on the chain can provide liquidity? An IP. An IP. Imagine being able to put your whole entire wardrobe but your home on the blockchain as a part of the internet somebody, that somebody can actually purchase from you, the, both the physical and digital and digital rights to it. So before you go further, because even that idea, specifically when it comes to IP, intellectual property, right? This is where a lot of people here today have found them gaining success, whether they're building courses, right? Or they're putting out their design or their creation or content. So in Web 2, essentially we sign a contract to utilize right, social media, such as Instagram. You sign that contract, they own your data going forward, but they give you access to their service to build on top of it. So you can have your profile, right? But they also have control over that data, right? And they have control over your profile. They can decide what to delete. They can decide what you put on there. They can decide how many people you get access to based on your own community that you've allowed and you've amassed. So that's total control. So when we think about like, let's say hip hop and rappers, we talk about when they sign 360 deals and have no control over their IP and don't gain their masters, but it's the exact same thing we do in Web 2. They give us access to a platform, so therefore we sign over all our rights to all our intellectual property. Does that sound about right? And then they tell you, wait a minute, we will let you collect tips like a waiter on your own content. But direct monetization has come because the new generation are saying that we don't like this model. We want ownership. We have seen generations struggle to follow along with the lead of the existing systems and infrastructure and gain no wealth, right? So being a generation that are the most disruptive, now when you see they're saying, yo, every time you go on the website, they say, do you want them to allow cookies? Do you want them to allow your data? Data is how Web2 makes all of their money. So with the disruption of data, it's forcing these companies to have to go into Web3 models to where you're not just the product or the consumer, they're helping you manage your IP and monetize your IP. So the ideas around it is that Web3 is for creators and owners and developers, right? So the way I look at it is that, you know, for me specifically, right, because you talked about being able to monetize and tokenize the things you already own. The same thing with content that you already own. You can't directly sell your content. You're forced to be in a contract where the whole world can distribute your content and you won't get a single dollar off of it. It can get a billion streams, right? There was a brother named Country Wayne. Y'all know who Country Wayne is? Country Wayne was getting, I think, 40 million something views a year. He was competing with the top TV shows in the world. Now, Instagram take away monetization tools, Country Wayne gotta go over to YouTube. The idea of the blockchain is saying you can directly monetize what you create, right? So instead, like with fan base, fan base is saying we create subscription models. If people want access to your content, then they have to pay. But even different than that, Web3 is saying that you own the platform essentially because if you put it on a decentralized blockchain, we're saying that basically we're gonna create a server for you, we're gonna create a social media platform, but we don't take ownership over it. Whoever builds on it, whatever you create on it, you own it. 
So it's like if I opened up a Walmart and I say, put your products on the shelf. You can own it and you can keep all your money. That'd be a great deal. But today the idea is that I open up the Walmart, put your products on the shelf, right? Then later I will create a tool for you to monetize and I need you to figure out a way to leverage the fact that a lot of people love your brand. So we had to create indirect models of monetization instead of direct models. And now these tools are merging to say that no, we have to allow the creators to be able to build because the monopolistic ways are not sustainable for the next generation to be able to build wealth. My graduates from my school being Forbes, backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> a mic drop. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs>